Hi, I'm Hermin Chia, Deputy Minister of Digital Affairs in Taiwan. I'm here today to talk about Taiwan's cybersecurity and communication resilience. If you like this topic, please like, comment, and subscribe to Taiwan Plus Docs. Based on our definition, we have a 2.4 million attack per day. Basically, this is a two times more than two years ago. If we use the same definition, the attack to Taiwan government is about six times compared with the attack to the U.S. federal government. If this was a random netizen, then probably the attack will be spread to different all the time. However, from our observation, they have working hours. The attack will start at 9 o'clock and end at 12 o'clock. So they are going to have a lunch break and come back to have an attack at 1.30 again. And the attack will be ended at 5.30 every day. So we do have a, a group of people that we know how to categorize those attack patterns. And also, we have an intelligent exchange with other countries, that's including US and most European Union countries. So we know exactly where the attack come from, and we know that was organized, not a random native. From the recent war, there's a Russia and the Ukraine war. Basically, I think a cyber attack and a communication attack will be the first step for the modern world. So basically, uh, we, we know there are three major types of attack. So the first one, uh, for example, they try to get into your computer and uh, try to steal those data inside the government agency's computer. And uh, the second type, once the hacker gets into one computer, they will try to attack the computer on the same network. And the third one uh, is not usual in the daily life, but people know about this the most. For example, during the Nancy Pelosi's visit, that we all know that many government agencies' website been taken down, and the laws uh, is commonly uh, used by the DDoS, Distributed Denial of Service Attack. It is can humiliate your website during the conflict. And based on the latest fancy uh, report, that there's about 61% of the daily attack, they are trying to compromise our data. Another 20%, they try to attack your system. About 10, 15%, they are trying to attack uh, our website or our uh, domain name service. The first one, we use in a zero trust architecture. Some system they were using your mobile phone to verify your face or verify your fingerprint. So, so we call this a multi-factor authentication. For the third type of attack, for example, like a, a DDoS attack to the uh, DNS system, in government agency, that's a, we have a standard procedure to help them to face this, this kind of threat. After Nancy Pelosi visit, you, you probably didn't see much DDoS attack. It does not mean there is no attack. Most of those attacks is already been taken care of. In Moda, as we always say, that's, uh, if nothing happened, then it means we've done a lot of things. In Moda, my major job is taking care of cybersecurity, communication resilience, and also digital government. So you can think that uh, we are the IT department of the whole government. But the, the reason we're doing those daily jobs is uh, when you face certain situation like an earthquake or some emergency, then you know how to react. For example, uh, during the Hualien earthquake last year, we've been co work with the fire department and send them a communication vehicle to the hotel inside Tianxiang while their internet was all broken. Because in the Taruko Gulch, all the 5G station and 4G station was down. So there is no communication, no connection. They use our Leo terminal to provide the internet, provide the communication channel to the drone. So the drone can easily get a real-time image. Actually, they're using this communication channel to find several people being trapped uh, inside the tunnel. 
So I think that is, is very important. No matter the disaster is it come from earthquake, typhoon, or is it come from attack. Communication is the most important thing that the people need. Uh, I was on a conference in Czech Republic last year. In Baltimore City, they have a similar situation. Uh, their subsea cable was being cut by a uh, Chinese cargo. Unfortunately, we are leading country to taking care of this kind of situation. We have uh, many subsea cable incidents. That is because we are an island. So we need to rely on subsea cable for internet. During the uh, subsea cable cut incident, in Mazu or other island. We try to provide the internet connection to critical infrastructure. However, uh, many people complain about the internet connection, that's including a, a video conference or Netflix is not smooth. I think this complaint is also very important to us. So for example, if, if the complaint is found all over the different location on the same island, and that we know there is a problem in subsea cable. So you can see the cable is just like some plastic and a fiber optic and a copper on the seabed. Because every cable, their lifetime is around 25 years. So we have a plan to have a new cable to replace the old one. But the situation we face right now, probably not normal. Because according our record, more than 60 times of the cable damage is from accident in the past three years. So it's a little bit too high. I say this in many different media. Most of the government agency and the academia, they agree this is kind of a grazing activity initiated by China and also other countries. I always say, if you want to cut a cable, you need to have a three accidents. The first accident is uh, you didn't look at the sailing map. You put your anchor over there. And the second accident is uh, after you anchor on those location, you should not anchor. Then you begin to move on your boat. The last one is you keep moving until you cut the cable. Even that is an accident, they are still need to take a responsibility about that. If you want to start it World War III, you probably need to do so. So modern human society needs communication, uh, not only during the war, but in, in the daily life. So if you cut the internet, that probably will change the society forever and it will change your daily life for immediately. So basically every time, I think it's at least two million US dollars to fix a cable. However, if you have a long cable, it's been cut or it's been broken in more than 20 locations, the cost to fix that cable probably higher than deploy a new cable. However, uh, in Europe, Europe, the problem they face is uh, they realize when the Chinese ship cargo ship cut the cable, and then they try to ask them to pay for it. Both the Chinese government and the, the Chinese company, they don't have any response. So that's why NATO decide to using a Coast Guard and the Navy patrol above this cable together, try to save their critical infrastructure. We were doing the same thing, but two years ago, we revised the, the law. So now uh, we can charge them and take the boat back to the port. There are only few countries in the world have this kind of a law, Australia and Taiwan. Of course, we have a different kind of a satellite. From a long time ago, we have a GEO, and currently we also have a MIO and a LEO satellite. We already proved that in the earthquake, we can use it as an emergency probably also including the war, because uh, the resilience means we need to have a multiple choice. We will not rely on single technology to guarantee our communication. We need to have a, a diversity and a multiple solution. 
well, we have uh, many cooperation with the different countries. Uh, if you look at uh, the U.S. website, CISA, they constantly uh, try to collect intelligence from the different hacker group, and they will also share with us those uh, uh, blacklists. We also have our blacklist, so we exchange this information with them. If I know there are some IP, they are highly correlated to Chinese hacker behavior, we will block those IP. But I think uh, the, the most uh, emergency risk right now is uh, this is not a random hacker. We are facing uh, organized cyber crime and cyber army by different countries. I think uh, this is a major threat uh, internationally and also uh, in Taiwan. So many people put their password on a sticker and then they put beside on the computer screen. Don't do that. Please take down this sticker and destroy it immediately. If it's available, then you need to set up the second factor authentication. You need to set up a phone or you need to set up a, uh, your face recognition or fingerprint. This will protect uh, your data because uh, then you will close the door. And secondary, uh, password is not safe enough. If you can put a second order authentication, you need to do so. You need to buy some virus protection or network protection tools. Make sure it's not provided by China or Russia. In cyberspace, you know there is a threat. So the government agency is doing a lot of things to protect our computer, protect our IT system. So I think everyone, every people uh, in the democracy country, they should find a, a reasonable way to protect their own computer and the mobile devices. If you like this topic, please like, comment, and subscribe to Taiwan Plus Stocks.